This is KHQA News at 10. It's your news now. Is my, my feeling that it was nothing more than sheer faith and nothing short of a miracle. Rescue workers want to thank a higher power for coming to the rescue early Sunday morning. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for KHQA News at 10. I'm Stephen Johnson. And I'm Raja Maples. Emergency crews spent an hour and a half trying to extricate a 19-year-old Quincy woman trapped in her crushed car on Missouri 19 near Center, Missouri. The Missouri Highway Patrol says 26-year-old Aaron Smith crossed the center line, hitting Katie Lentz head-on. Now, friends, family, and those who rescued Lentz would love to find and thank a mysterious priest who they say helped make that rescue possible. New London Fire Chief Raymond Reed says rescue crews spent the first 45 minutes after the accident trying to get Katie Lentz out of this car to no avail Sunday morning shortly after 9 a.m. The metal on this older model Mercedes dulled the department's equipment. The materials it was constructed of were probably uh, better than what how cars are constructed today. It was a very well-built car and when you compact materials like that one was compacted they become even stronger because you're cutting through multiple things instead of just one layer. About an hour into the rescue, Katie told rescue workers she'd like to pray out loud with them. That's when a priest appeared out of nowhere. He came up and approached the patient and, and did offer a prayer. It was a Catholic priest and he had uh, anointing oil with him and a sense of, of calmness come over her then, even more so than what she had been already. And, uh, and it did us as well. I can't be for certain what, who said or how it was said or where it come from, but myself and one of, one of the other firefighters that was uh, beside me, um, we, we very plainly heard that, that we should remain calm, that uh, our tools would, would now work, and that we would get her out of that vehicle. The Hannibal Fire Department showed up right after that prayer with fresh equipment and was able to finish the extrication. After getting Katie safely into the air evac helicopter, at least a dozen other rescue workers turned around to thank the priest who was nowhere in sight. The highway had been blocked for a quarter of a mile during the hour and a half rescue, leaving no bystanders or no parked cars nearby. Lentz's family and friends are amazed by the story. Where did this guy come from? We we're looking for the priest. You know, whether it was just a, a, a priest as an angel, serving as an angel, or an actual angel that came in uh, and, and wearing the, uh, the priestly attire, um, he was an angel to, to all those and to Katie. We just would like to find this gentleman and be able to uh, thank him. As a first responder, uh, you don't know what you're going to run into. Everything is a case-by-case -case basis, everything that we come across. We have a lot of tools that allow us to do many things, and we have extensive training. In this particular case, it is my, my feeling that it was nothing more than sheer faith and nothing short of a miracle. Now, Katie has undergone surgeries to repair several broken bones. Here's video we took of her a couple of years ago when she was collecting toothbrush donations for area children. Katie is scheduled for more surgeries in the coming weeks, but friends and family say her spirit has not wavered. Her wrist is broken. She's got several broken ribs, so she's had a lot, a lot of bo broken bones to deal with. This is KHQA News at 10. It's your news now. We gave the priority and we feel very strong about this particular artery. A member of the Tri-State Development Steering Committee says that something needs to be done to improve Missouri Highway 19 in Northeast Missouri. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Stephen Johnson. And I'm Rasha Maples. A head-on collision three miles west of Central Missouri sent two people to the hospital early Sunday morning. You'll recall 19-year-old Katie Lentz of Quincy had to be extricated from her car. The driver of the other car in that accident, 26-year-old Aaron Smith of New London, faces charges for a DWI, second-degree assault, and failure to drive on the right half of the roadway, according to the Missouri State Highway Patrol. Now, many eyes have turned to the safety of the two-lane Missouri Highway 19, which is a major thoroughfare to get to Columbia, Jefferson City, and the Lake of the Ozarks. I spoke with a Quincy man tonight who's been asking the state to do something about Missouri 19 for years. 
Pat Pepping serves as a member of the Tri-State Development Steering Committee. It's named Missouri 19 one of its priorities to improve the economic development of the Tri-State region, but more importantly, to keep drivers safe. A lot of our folks around here go to the Lake of the Ozarks, goes to Mark Twain Lake, and we want a safe route for them back and forth. We don't feel that the two-lane road is over there is a safe way, and, and we want to make it a major artery in and out of the tri-state region. Wanda Burr-White from Perry, Missouri, was one of the first people on the scene Sunday morning. She can relate to the dangers of Missouri 19. A semi T-boned her car about two years ago along this stretch of highway. I think it's a dangerous road. There's been a lot of accidents on it, and it's heavily traveled. You've got 18 wheelers, you've got campers. I would like to see a divided highway. The Missouri Department of Transportation told KHQA it has not identified Missouri 19 as a priority, but that's something Pepping and other members of the Tri-State Development Steering Committee are working to change. Take 61, it was in Missouri. I'm not picking on Missouri, by the way. Missouri has some great roads and they've done a great job. And when they, when they improved 61 north of Canton, think of all the lives that saved. People were being killed when that 61 it was going south out of Hannibal years ago down this to St. Louis was a dangerous road, a two-lane road. Four-lane roads are much safer. But Pepping says it's going to take a commitment on the part of the state and taxpayers. The problem with MoDOT has, it's like the other two states in Iowa and Illinois, is they need funding. This is where we gotta come across. Folks are just gonna have to step up and fund highways. Now you might recall the mysterious priest who happened to come upon Sunday morning's accident. Friends and family of Katie Lenz and rescue workers would like to thank the mysterious man who they say stopped to pray during the extrication that eventually freed Lenz from her car. Wanda Burr White remembers the priest well, and I asked her to describe him. He was dressed as a priest. He was dark complected. He was probably five, six, maybe. He was not heavy set, but he probably weighed close to about 200 pounds. He had an accent, but I don't know what, what nationality. He had dark hair. Burr White and her husband held Katie's head while rescue workers were trying to extricate her from the car. Burr White's husband added that the priest was wearing black rimmed glasses and resembled Walter Mathow. By the way, Katie's mother told me Katie has been upgraded to serious condition at Blessing Hospital. In addition to several internal injuries, she has undergone orthopedic surgeries and faces more in the future. This is KHQA News at 10. It's your news now. The road was blocked off for quite a few miles, two or three miles, and don't know, I don't see how he could have driven up on a car in a car. Rescue workers are still scratching their heads over who that priest was who came to the rescue Sunday morning. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for KHQA News at 10. I'm Rasha Maples. Emergency crews responded to a head-on collision three miles west of Central Missouri on Sunday. That's when emergency workers spent more than an hour freeing 19-year-old Katie Lentz of Quincy from her car. Medical crews said she was failing fast. Witnesses say a mysterious priest came out of nowhere to pray with rescue workers and Katie. Falls County Sheriff's Deputy Richard Adair was first responder on the scene. Um, About an hour into the, the rescue, call, the situation like, started getting dire. The uh, fire chief, uh, Raymond Reed, had kind of stepped back and taken a, you know, stepped away. And he came up to me and said uh, he was concerned because he was out of options. The tools weren't working and uh, it was by that time I, I said almost an hour and we're a little bit more. He said I don't know how we're gonna get her out and I said Raymond we I promised her mother and her that we get her out. We have to get her out. Ten minutes later Katie asked those around her to pray out loud with her. That's when they say a priest walked up from the north part of the highway. No one saw how he got there. Reed says the highway was blocked for two to three miles and emergency responders were not letting anyone pass the roadblocks. And he came between and he asked if he could anoint um, the girl in the car. And at first, my first thought was that it would possibly send the wrong message to Katie, that maybe we had called a priest that we thought that she wasn't going to make it. So I went back and um, talked to the priest and told him that we were worried that she would think that we'd given up hope. And he said, I just want to anoint her. And so we just 
let him come up to the scene. Witnesses say he anointed Katie and her rescuers with oil and prayed with them, asking them to remain calm and saying that the crew's equipment would work. The Hannibal Fire Department pulled up shortly after with fresh equipment and was able to free Katie. After getting her in the air evac helicopter, rescue workers said the priest was nowhere in sight. New London Fire Chief Raymond well Reed says the department part. ended up and taking 80 photos of the scene. Like he says the priest did not appear in any of them. I've done this a long time, and that's probably the most horrific accident I've ever seen that a human survived. 27 years as a police officer, and I've never seen a person as, as strong as she was. The Diocese of Jefferson City, Missouri says it has not located the priest involved. Out of respect for the privacy of any priest who may have been involved and does not wish to come forward, the diocese has decided not to further investigate this incident. The diocese would like to say that it's grateful that a priest was able to exercise his ministry in this manner and request prayers for the healing of the victim, as well as prayers of thanks. Now, Adair described the priest as being between 60 to 65 years of age, five foot six, olive skin, and had a thick accent. He was dressed in a traditional black shirt and pants, white collar, with a silver, older-looking cross around his neck. Now, by the way, Lentz is still in Blessing Hospital in serious condition. She has several broken bones and will have to go undergo many orthopedic surgeries. The Missouri Mystery Priest is a mystery no more. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Stephen Johnson. And I'm Rasha Maples. The Catholic Diocese of Jefferson City today identified the mysterious priest who helped at a crash scene last week near central Missouri that severely hurt a Quincy woman. Here he is. Reverend Patrick Dowling is a priest in the Jefferson City Diocese. He was traveling Highway 19 between mass assignments that morning. Now, Dowling stopped and prayed with the crash victim, 19-year-old Katie Lentz and emergency workers. He says he's pleased he was able to help by performing his ministry, but he also acknowledges he was one of many who helped Lentz that day. I spoke with Father Dowling at a Catholic church in Fulton, Missouri today about the rescue and the mystery that surrounded his presence. Father Patrick Dowling says he was returning to Mid-Missouri following a mass in Ewing, Missouri because the regular priest was sick on the morning of Sunday, August 4th. That's when he approached the accident scene on Missouri 19. He said he was already inside the blockade before authorities started blocking traffic. He waited until it was possible to drive up closer to the scene. He ended up parking behind a large vehicle about 150 yards from the scene, walked up to a member of the Rawls County Sheriff's Department, and asked if he could approach the scene. Father Dowling says he never plans to drive away from an emergency roadblock or no roadblock. If I were in an accident and a priest I heard that a priest drove by. I would get him for that. That he would pass by the scene of an accident and leave me at death's door without stopping to help. You do it. You do it. You offer your services as a priest because you have the power to forgive sins and you have the power to anoint the sea. If you have faith, you stop. Rescue crews took about 80 photos of the crash scene as crews were trying to rescue 19-year-old Katie Lentz. Father Dowling, also known as the mysterious priest, appeared in none of them. Maybe the pilot and I were mistaken one for the other. That is the only explanation I have because I didn't hide <laughs> and I just stood there uh, waiting, praying. Father Dowling does not want credit for the rescue. He said a higher power deserves that credit along with the hard work and diligence of the rescue workers on the scene that morning. It is Almighty God who intervened because there was something exceptional there in the manner of her rescue. He described rescue crews as working harmoniously together like a Swiss watch. The sergeant was quiet but totally in control. Foreign people who were not part of the scene were removed and um, everybody worked, did his or her job according to their, you know, their own expertise 
and um, it was just well organized. Now, so why did Father Dowling decide to come forward to identify himself? Well, the Diocese of Jefferson City's communications director said that when Dowling read news reports about the family and rescue crews wishing to know who the priest was, he wanted them to know. <laughs> Father Patrick Dowling with the Catholic Diocese of Jefferson City and Katie Lentz sat down together in a less stressful environment Friday afternoon than was the case on August 4th. It's very exciting. I feel so honored to be with such a man of faith who he was there to do his job the day of the accident and I'm so thankful he was there. I'm very happy to see you're doing so well and um looking better than you were the night of the, of the morning of the accident. Father Dowling currently works in the prison ministry. He confessed that he was the mysterious priest to the prisoners he works with before he stepped forward publicly. The first Saturday I was asked directly in the prison, was it me? So I, I told them, uh, yes it is, but I haven't yet spoke, uh, to, spoken to the family and uh, you've got to keep it quiet. You guys know how to keep your mouths shut, I told them. <laughs> well, when I went back the next Saturday, not a word had leaked. Not a word. It was blazing across the television screens and in all the papers, but not a word had come from those men. Father Dowling said the prisoners kept track of Katie and even prayed for her healing. And they asked me about how was Katie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they, they wanted to pray for Katie there. In the That's prison. so nice to hear. During Friday's meeting between Katie and Father Dowling came on Katie's 20th birthday, a birthday that might not have come without the help of everyone involved in rescuing her from this head-on collision. So nice to be able to talk to you and meet you and understand who you are as not such a mystery anymore. And I'm, <laughs> I'm so thankful you were there and just to give us all a sense of calmness. And I really appreciate that. Without you, the story wouldn't have gone where it was. <laughs> so I, I know you were, you were only doing what you were called to do. What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming. For Katie's life that was spared. It was only fitting that Quincy Medical Group's Pray Out Loud 5K Run Walk began with a prayer out loud. And the woman who was lucky to be able to walk, walked right alongside the walkers and runners who turned out to show their support. I'm so glad I can be here today and I'm so glad that I can walk as, as much as I can. You know, every step I'm grateful for. This is the older model Mercedes in which Katie Lentz had to be extricated. There is no doubt if you see that car. What do you think when you see that car? It makes me realize how close I was to losing my life. I've been a trauma surgeon for 13 years and I do see a lot of multiply injured patients. So I have never seen anything like the car Katie was in and then watch her literally walking by it with her walker three months later. I, I don't think I've ever seen from that degree of just horror at the accident scene to Katie walking today. Dr. Rena Stewart operated multiple times on Katie after the crash. Katie had what are called compound fractures or open fractures, meaning her bones actually came right through the skin, which is obviously a very serious injury and a high risk of infection. Now, less than three and a half months after her injuries, she is walking. She happened to have a walker, but it was really just there for balance. My husband was running with me and I'm crying like a baby watching her. Uh, really, truly just phenomenal progress. This Pray Out Loud 5K run walk benefits the new London, Perry and Center Volunteer Fire Departments. Well, they came to me in the time that I needed them most and you know, you don't really think about the volunteer fire departments too much, at least I didn't before my accident and I really am glad that we're raising awareness for them and get them the, the tools that they really need to help others. When we first found out that, that the family had even considered a thought like that, you know, it, it was uh, shocking to all of us, I think, because what we do is, is something that we don't expect anything in return for. We all work on limited budgets, and we're used to that. Something like this is, it, it's just not something that comes along every day, and it's overwhelming for all of us to even be considered for such a great gift. Sometimes for us, uh, we don't have an escape from some of the bad, and we've had to wrecks uh, that followed this one where the outcome was pretty grim. So when you find something like this, you kind of get a hold of it and you grab on to that 
and, and you let it carry you on to the next good thing that happens. So this has been a, a good healer for a lot of us. Katie plans to head back to school next semester at Tulane University. She plans to become a dentist. I know my friends are very excited to have me back and I can't wait to return.